my first question to you, sir. So can you tell me what is the, I mean, the importance of the code of conduct for every journalist and, of course, especially for Cambodia, sir? Yeah, I think code of conduct is, uh, is very important for, uh, uh, for the media in every, every democratic country. Yes, sir. Because it's a tool to protect your uh, freedom of, of expression of all the media. You know, because uh, if, you are, uh, if you follow the code of conduct, it means that you are the responsible media. Uh, so if you are responsible to the society, uh, so it is a protection of yourself to, to anyone who wants to uh, interfere into the media. Because um, uh, you will say that uh, you, uh, we already follow the code of conduct, we are the responsible media. So no one uh, should interfere to our uh, work. You know. Uh, so which our work is to to present truth and and uh, dissemination information to the public. The code of ethics yeah. is extremely important, um, and I'm I'm glad to see it's being revised after what 23 years. Um, the 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 update is, is is very timely because we're about to have the new press law. The the press law is also being updated. Um, I think there can be not a single code of ethics for all Cambodian journalists. I think larger media organizations should be able to have their own code of ethics. But in Cambodia, we also have a, a lot of smaller media organizations. They may not have uh, the resources or the capacity to, to, to develop something like this. Uh, it's very good. This document is only about four pages. Um, and CCJ is by far uh, the biggest and most widely respected uh, and the most serious uh, journalist organization in the country. We now have about more than 50 journalist associations in this country, but CCJ, CCJ is by far the biggest and most respected, so I think it's quite important that there's a code of contact, code of, code of ethics uh, for, for CCJ journalists, which basically reflects uh, most of Cambodian journalists. But sir, at the same time, every country, they all have different political landscape. So should the uh, journalist code of conduct be flexible to the political landscape also? Yes, I think uh, mostly in the, in the uh, Southeast Asian country, you know, uh, because where people are, in every country in, in uh, Southeast Asian country, people always criticize the media of their misconduct. You know, uh, they, they more always uh, uh, violate the code of conduct. So people uh, in the Southeast Asia mostly, I think it's similar in Thailand and, and uh, uh, Cambodia, that people are expect that uh, media should be, uh, be more behave, you know, in terms of uh, following the code of conduct. So uh, uh, this is, I think this is our culture that uh, we, we, we has been followed for uh, so many years, which is uh, maybe uh, different from, from uh, uh, Western country. For example, if you're talking about the code of conduct or do you're talking the press council in, in, in the U.S., you know, yes. they will see you, oh, you're talking about, uh, you're talking about self-censorship, you know, uh, which is, uh, I think it's a different story, you know. So we, we hear, we, we, we think that the, 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 to follow, to, to have the code of conduct is, is uh, the, the necessary things. But, uh, the, the, but the key question is, who is going to regulate the code of conduct. That is, that's the bigger question. Because uh, in some country, they may say that, okay, the government should should involve in this kind of process. But yes, but in some country, they said the government should not involve in any any things of, of this kind of process, you know. So uh, uh, we have, a, in, in Southeast Asia, we have a different level uh, or different uh, type of, of, of uh, uh, self regulation yes. mechanism. Yes, sir. You know, for example, in, in Thailand, we, we choose uh, what we call totally, oh. I mean, we call absolute self regulation. Yes. Uh, we have no, no law to, to. No, no interference from the government. No, no law involved in, in uh, our self regulation process, you know. So we set up our own, no government budget, no nothing with the gov not, nothing oh. government. So the government cannot interfere to our. Our uh, work, you know, but in in uh, Indonesia, in Myanmar, in uh, in Timor Leste, they have law yes, to uh, to uh, 
they have law to to set up the the press council, you know. But they have a different level of uh, interference. For like in Indonesia, uh, they also said that the government have to support uh, the 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 press council, you know. And that there's no uh, government uh, people in the press council, and the process of selection committee is is by their own. So, uh, what if? Uh the press council of code of ethics is to uh, being created in Cambodia. So, how do you think it might contribute uh, to uh, strengthen the press in the country? But my experience with um, uh, press councils, and I have no direct experience, but my knowledge of, of press councils is that they cover a variety of issues, not not just ethics. Um, uh, and as my Thai colleague. Uh, mentioned, you know, they have them in Thailand. It was only set up uh, 1997, I think. The one in Australia, I'm not sure when that was set up. I know there's a press council in the UK. Uh, Japan, I don't think there is a press council as such. There's probably some other sort of body. It's got not got the same name. But I mean, uh, I think it's up to every country to decide. I mean, if, if the media in this country think it's worthwhile to have a press council, I think, you know, they can set one up. There's no, nothing stopping anyone from setting one up. For more than two decades now, uh, how has the press uh, council of Thailand and its, its code of conduct shaped Thailand society as yeah. a whole? Sir? Yeah, I think uh, uh, what we also think that is going to, um, you know, a little by little, you know, because uh, in the past, if you go back like uh, in the 25 years ago, if you see on, uh, on the first page of my newspaper, the Thailand Daily, you see all the crime scene on, on the first page. You know, you see blood, you see whatever. But now you won't, you won't see that anymore because it's the developing of the, the, the code of conduct yes. and, and the guideline from the code of conduct in the, in the Thai media. You know, so, so we are getting better and better by, by having the press council because when, whenever the, the front page editor, they're going to put a, a photograph or they going to put a headline, they have to think about, okay, we are a member of the press council. If I put this, uh, uh, are we going to uh, violate the code of conduct? So they, so they have to think twice every time they do that, you know. So, so this is the important thing. We, 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 we will not regulate the, the social media because we don't have, I don't think we can uh, regulate the social media. Uh, except that the, the social media that's used by our member. Yeah, yeah. For example, if Thairat has a social media account, we only regulate them, but we don't we don't regulate people who are, you know, like citizen journalists oh, okay. or you know or independent media who are not our member. Yeah. Oh, so you only regulate your member? Yes, yes, okay. yes. So we are the what we call the the, the volunteer voluntary uh, okay. self regulation, uh, not not like Indonesia. Indonesia is compulsory uh, 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 self regulation. We are similar to Australia. Australia also have the Australian Press Council, which is uh, voluntary. You know, so some uh, big newspaper has resigned from our press council, you know, and I think so uh, it's, it's also happened in Australia, you know, it's, it's similar. So do you, do you think it's a too late for Cambodia to set up uh, the press council now? I don't think there's any, anything wrong with setting up one now. I mean, it's very good timing. The, the code of ethics has just been revised for the first time in 23 years. And we're just about to get a new law on the press, so I think the timing is actually very good. If Cambodia want, if Cambodian journalists want to do that, if they if they see a need, uh, I don't think they should go ahead and set up a new body just for the sake of get setting up a new body and having meetings for having meetings. Uh, if they think that it can address uh, some of the issues that are not being addressed, by all means, yeah, why not? Yeah, I think it's too late already, but 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 you still have time to do so because because uh, the the the, the uh, the uh, media environment, you know, media yeah. landscape is changing, you know, so, so it's, it's maybe timely to do so, you know, uh, so that you can think about, you know, how you, how you will, your relationship with the, with the social media, your relationship with the citizen journalists and the professional journalists, you know, so you can use the code of conduct, you can use the, the, the way you, you self-regulating to, to separate between the professional journalists and the, the, the citizen journalists. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.